Okay, welcome to Vectors and Scalars Part 2. Uh, this is the part of the video that is actually going to have some practice problems for you to try on your own. Um, I'll present the problem to you, go ahead and pause the video, work the problem out, and then when you restart the video again, I'll present the solution, um, and you go ahead and see whether or not the answer that you have on your paper resembles the answer that I have um, on the slides. Okay, so here's your first problem. A hockey puck slides 36 meters along the ice straight toward the goal suddenly is hit such that it takes a sharp, instantaneous right turn and travels 28 meters. How far has the puck traveled? How far is it from where it started? Now keep in mind that there's two distinct questions here. How far has the puck traveled? And how far is it from where it started? The first question is asking you distance, the total amount of um, distance that the puck has traveled. The second question is asking you for displacement. How far is, it, is the puck from where it started initially? Uh, two different problems and we'll do them two different ways. So go ahead and pause the video now and work it out on your own. Alright, so you should have a solution now. Uh, let's go ahead and go on to my solution. First thing I'm going to do is include a little picture of a goal so that I know how I want to orient my picture. Now if you weren't oriented your sideways, that doesn't matter. Um, it just is the way I oriented mine. So, uh, my first vector, 36 meters towards the goal. I'll go ahead and label that. My second vector is going to be 28 meters to the right. Um, we're going to assume that if it's a right turn, that it's 90, uh, 90 degrees from the other one. Um, and we'll go ahead and label that one as well, 28 meters. Okay. So first question is how far has the puck traveled? That'll be total distance. How far is it from where it started? That'll be, be displacement. So distance, that'll be these two arrows here. Um, direction is irrelevant. All we care about is the actual amount that the puck has traveled. Second question, how far is it from where it started? That'll be displacement. This is when the direction does matter. Now since we're using the tip to tail method here, we're going to want to draw a resultant from the tail of the first vector to the tip of the last vector. So that's going to end up being this arrow right here. Finding distance is going to be fairly easy. All we need to do is add the 36 meters to the 28 meters and get a total distance. That'll be 36 plus 28 meters will give us 64 meters. That was an easy one. Okay. Second question, you should know this because we've been going over this in class, but you need to use um, the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, anytime you have a triangle with sides A, B, and C, and a right angle, that's important. It has to be a triangle with a right angle. You can go ahead and use the Pythagorean theorem to find the hypotenuse. So we have the Pythagorean theorem here. Um, a little bit of algebra, if we square root both sides and take the positive, that'll tell us that C, the hypotenuse, is going to be equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared all inside the square root. Let's go ahead and use that with this problem here. Um, go ahead and write it out. Remember, please write down the formula, plug the numbers in. A lot of times I see uh, students who will put the square root 36 plus 28 and forget the squares on the inside of the square root. Um, that will completely change your answer. You'll end up with something much smaller than it should be. Okay. So I squared everything inside the parentheses in both cases, added them together, um, and then my next step and last step will be to go ahead and take the square root of everything inside. That will give me a displacement of about 17.26 meters. Now, um, in my class I usually say go to the first or second decimal place, um, do what your teacher says. I also will tend to get a question on whether or not I wanted an exact form. This guy down here, square root of 2080 meters squared, um, I don't care. Uh, you can give me either this answer or this answer, and I'm sure your teacher will feel the same way. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just do a quick quick note here. Um, the tip-to-tail method makes the most sense when you're dealing with displacements um, because the model, the, the tip to the tail, uh, makes a lot of sense with the, uh, the actual situation. So moving on to problem number two, we have a rabbit. She's a little terrified. Um, she hops from her burrow 43 meters north, spies some juicy carrots, and hops 67 meters west. Suddenly, she sees the farmer and hops back east 56 meters to hide in a bush. How far is the rabbit from her burrow? Now, you need to figure out whether I'm asking about displacement or distance and solve the problem. Go ahead and pause the video now. Okay, so now that you have your own solution, let's go ahead and look at my solution. Um, now, I've chosen north to be the top side of my paper. Um, south to be the bottom side of my paper, so um, east and west will be respectively um, right and left. So 43 meters north will be this guy right here. Then she hops 67 meters west. We're going to assume that that's a right angle um, and label that. 
Now, when she hops back east 56 meters, I'm going to start at the tip of the last vector and go back east 56 meters. So that means it's going to be negative 56 meters. Okay. Um, it'll be really helpful with problems like this if you combine the x and y components first. That'll be um, the 67 and the 56 meters. Let's add those two together to get that result before we start, before we try to do the part that's two dimensions. So that'll give us 11 meters here. And now I can find the resultant displacement. This guy right here. Um, when you want to find the resultant displacement, or the magnitude of the resultant displacement, you're going to want to use the Pythagorean theorem. Remember, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So we'll rearrange that and plug in our numbers. That'll give us the square root of 11 meters squared plus 43 meters squared. Make sure that you've got those square roots on the inside. So just expand it. We'll give you a square root of 100, uh, excuse me, the square root of 1,970 meters squared. Um, throw that in the calculator and it'll give you that the total displacement is about 44.38 meters from where she started. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to problem number three. An airplane is flying at 107 meters per second north while a crosswind blows from the east at 34 meters per second. What is the resulting speed of the airplane? Please use the parallelogram method for this problem. Um, go ahead and do the problem on your own now, pausing the video. Okay, so you should have your own solution. Let's go ahead and look at mine. Again, I'm going to start with a picture of the airplane um, and label it with its first vector. Uh, which is going to be 107 meters per second and its second vector will go east at 34 meters per second. Now again, since I'm using the parallelogram method, the two vectors need to go tail to tail. You see right here, tail to tail. Um, go ahead and label that second vector there. Um, using the parallelogram method, we will draw in the next vector and bring it over so that it's perfectly parallel to the original vector. Then do the same thing with the second vector. Okay, Just like that. Now these two lines here are virtual vectors. Okay, they're, they're not there, but they're going to be there to help us draw the resultant in. The resultant then being this arrow right here. Okay. Now it's clear, as you can see, that if the airplane is going forward and a crosswind pushes it east, then the resultant vector should be forward or north and east. Okay. Um, it will be important that you draw the arrow pointing in the correct direction. Don't draw the arrow the other way around with the, with the tail up here. You want to make sure that the tip is up here. Two tails to two points. That should be the direction that you draw the vector. Okay, so now we need to find the magnitude. Now, with the parallelogram method, it doesn't matter whether you use this right triangle or this right triangle. I'm just going to use this one because it was the second one up. And we use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of this vector right here. Um, the resultant velocity. Okay. So we'll plug it into our formula. 107 squared plus 34 squared. All of that under the square root. Add them all together. will give us 12,605 meters squared per second squared. All of that under the square root. Throw that in the calculator. And it will give us about 112.27 meters per second. Now notice that 112 meters per second is more than the 107 meters per second. So that crosswind is adding some velocity to the airplane. Um, this is good because just like in geometry, the hypotenuse always needs to be the longest of the three sides. Okay, so we've got a quick note here. Um, and that is that the parallelogram makes the most sense when, we're tr when we want to use vectors to find the net velocities, the net accelerations, or net forces. Okay, it's because you've got, um, let's say, a body let's use my mouse, you got a body that's being that's moving in a certain direction and then you give it another direction something like that you want to make sure that you um, that all the forces or the velocities are all happening from the center of mass of the object so the parallelogram method tends to make the most sense um, to use again remember that net means total so in this case the net velocity the result in velocity all these words are interchangeable um, you tend to see the word net when we're talking about forces though Okay, so for this next problem, you're going to need to go get yourself some graph paper. Um, go ahead and pause the video while you go grab some, or if you've got it handy, um, just continue on to the next part.